We're looking at the grade 12 CAT or Computer Application Technology PRAC exam from November 2017. Just for some extra practice, we're looking at the Excel question for those of you who are struggling with Excel. Just take note that this exam paper was out of 180 marks, which the norm at the moment is 150. So it is a slightly longer question than normal, but that's great because it gives us more questions to practice on for today's video. Okay, we're dealing with the second spreadsheet question and this we're dealing with four quests and we must go to the right worksheet. So I've opened up the four quest and we are on the correct worksheet. Always make sure that. And let's start with question 4.1. The answers in questions regarding to the reason for visits are stored in column H. So we must insert a function to determine how many visitors do not respond in column H. So let's look at column H. Column H, so those are the reasons, but some of them did not give a reason. How dare they not give a reason? We want to determine for question 4.1 in column H3, is that right? H3, yes. One, how many did not give a reason? Well, we want to count all those that don't have a reason, which means they are blank. So we can say equals count blank. And we're going to count blank all of these reasons. How many of these reasons are empty? All the way to the bottom. Oh, there's quite a few. There we go, right to the 115. Take note of 115. And then we can close our bracket. And so it says there that 5 did not give a reason. 4.2. The end time in column K is the completion of the questionnaire is obtained by adding 20 minutes to the column J time. Oh, you got 20 minutes to the questionnaire. So we're going to add 20 minutes onto column J to get the end time in column K. Insert a time time function oh so that k6 to determine the end time of the completion of the questionnaire we can assume the seconds in the time function will always be zero okay so we're looking at k and j so let's look so we're looking at the k column we want to put a formula in there that's going to work out that time plus 20 minutes hmm. so we need to use some sort of time function so I know equals time. We know that time takes in the hours, the minutes, and the seconds. So we know that the seconds is still going to be zero every single time, but we want the hour to be the exact same, but the minutes must be 20 minutes later. So let's try this. Let's, okay, so I know the 58, 59 is quite annoying because we want that to go up one. But let's try this. Let's say I want to get that particular hour. And so I'll show you this. I'll look at it. So if I do use little building blocks on the side here, equals hour. So the hour function returns the hour. Of a time do you see that so that gives me the eight and then the minute function minutes not min because min is the smallest gives me the minute you see it gave me the eight and the 59 so what happens if i create a brand new time that is the hour of that time and the minutes of that time but we're going to add 20 onto the minute part and then the seconds we're going to keep zero so do you see that so we got the same hour from the time but we took the minutes and just added 20 let's see what it does to that 59 does it make the eight go up to a nine hey 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 that looks right eh? so what we did is i bro broke it down into steps you could write those formulas into there so you don't so you could put that blue formula into the blue if you want to but you're allowed to use these building blocks on the side you like to use cells there what we did is we we got the time so we took the hour of that time and kept it the same and we got the minute but we took that minute and we added 20 now because that's a 59 it automatically pushed my hour up for me automatically so what's 20 plus 24 plus 8 that should be 44 plus 8 why does that not work? Oh, because we haven't done the times on the side. Okay, that's why it didn't work. So let's scroll that down. Ah, oh, there we go. It's working. That's one way of doing it. Another way that you could do, I'm going to do it over here. Another way that you could do it is you could take that time and you could add on 20 minutes. Now to do 20 minutes, you got to say time and you want to add zero hours. You want to add 20 minutes and you want to add zero seconds. So if I do that, add a time of that. Let's see what that does. And it does the same thing. You see, yes, it just formats it into a different format, but it took the 2032 and made 2052 so but the, the format i just go click there and make the format the same so there we go that looks a bit better okay so that's those are the possibilities for that question let's look at the next one 4.3 the total number of visitors is stored in k2 so that's the total number of visitors k2 instead of formula in k3 to determine the percentage of visitors who gave a reason in the questionnaire for visiting the festival so we want the ones who gave a reason not who did not give a reason who gave a reason so looking at k2 and k3 so let's have a look at so we are in there k2 that's the number of visitors there are we want to work out what percentage of people gave a reason we know how many people did not give a reason and that's how many people there are in total so therefore if i take that five or that minus five that'll tell me how many people did give a reason so if i do that equals that minus that that will tell me exactly how many people 
did give a reason. But we want to work out what they say, the percentage of people that gave that. The When they say the percentage of something, like if you think about your mark, you get a mark out of 180, that it's percent. It's the number of marks you got, or what you're looking for, divided by how many there are in total. So in this case, we want to find the percentage of people that gave a reason. So we want to take the number, that's what we're looking for, 105 out of how many there are in total. So we're going to take that value and divide it by how many people there are in total. Now, just be careful when you do this, because remember, bot math is going to do that divide first and then the minus. So we want to take the answer of K2 minus H3, put brackets around it, and that answer must be divided by K2. And that will give me a percentage, 94. Now, what did they say anything about displaying it as a percentage? Okay, so they don't say anything. So we must just determine the percentage. Now, now, normally, there's two ways of doing it. You could click on this to make it a percentage so that it looks like 95%. That's one way of doing it. Some people will take that formula and they'll multiply it by 100. And that'll make it 95. That, that also looks fine. I think it'll be acceptable as well. So that's one way of doing it. Another thing you could have done, instead of doing that formula of that minus that, you could have used a count a function which counts all the reasons which is in this block that are not blank so count a counts any text so if there's no text it'll be it won't count it so if I do count a you'll see it'll also give me 105 it counted how many of those have text and then we can divide that by how many there are in total and then we can use the percentage formatting to do something like that so you could do either one of those there we go I think that'll be correct Okay, 4.4, use conditional formatting so that the names and surnames, column A and B, will be in a particular fill color. If the frequency in column G equals the frequency in B3, Oh, this is going to be quite interesting. Use a formula in the conditional formatting feature. Hmm, so let's have a look at this. Let's go. If we click over here, we can select which option we want. Okay, so if we select weekly, we want if I, all the weekly names and surnames must be changed. Okay, so we want the conditional formatting to be applied to all of this text. So let's select all the text that we want, those two, those two columns. So we want conditional formatting. So conditional formatting, we want a particular rule. I want a new rule. Okay, so what's the rule going to be? The rule's going to be, it's not based on the name or the surname. So it's not nothing to do with the cells that contain or anything. It's actually going to be based on a formula so we need some sort of formula to, to do this we need to look and the formula needs to be true or false we want to see if this block is the same as that value if that makes sense you start off with an equal to sign so if the frequency which is that block there is equal to the same as the value in b3 so there's a little thing that you must take note of here we want when we copy this formula down we want that b3 to always refer to b3 so that's why the dollars around it is very important however when this goes down to for example b7 we don't want to refer to g6 for b7 we want to refer to g7 and g8 and g9 so i'm going to actually take those dollar signs out of the g6 we keep them in the b3 because we don't want the b3 to go to b4 b5 is it we want to stay b3 so let's try that let's change the fill of it to a different color there we go and we're going to go fill and it's we, they didn't say what color i'm gonna make it let's make it blue i like blue there we go let's see if that works boom ah see there was a little problem there because i made sure that the b the g7 was allowed to move down when it moved across it actually is not referring to g6 it's moving to that one that's why the, the surname isn't being done so i could do them individually but do you agree it is working the weekly ones are highlighting the name okay so let's go edit that rule ah oh, mr long so we let's go look here so we're going to go back to it and manage rules let's go edit that rule click on it and let's edit it so let's think about this when we said G6, we want the G6 when it moves down to move to G8, to G7, G8, G9. But we do not want the G6 when it moves across to surname to move to H6. So we want the G actually to keep its dollar dollar g so keep it at g all the time but the six is allowed to go to seven eight nine ten in that way the surname will refer to also g six seven eight nine so let's do that and urethra i mean rika there we go so there you can see weekly 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 and if i change this to always or always are all selected hey there we go so there we go that one is working well done Okay, last question 4.5 we're dealing with charts so they say a chart has been created for us there we go they've got a chart they give me the range and it's in the other worksheet uh, we must add a title to the vertical axis so we want to add amount we want to use coins to display in the second column and horizontal axis labels so those labels should be displayed like that and in major units of two days so every second day must be displayed okay so how do we do this let's go first of all let's let's do the easy part so let's go to the worksheet there we go boom the second 
can cheat. There we go. So there's our chart. Does it look? It looks very similar. There we go. There we go. We're happy. Great. So now with our chart, we want to, I'm just move it to the middle here so I can see it a bit better. We want to add a title, a vertical axis title. So vertical axis title. So when I come here to the plus, I want an axis title and I want a vertical axis title. There's no one for vertical. I'm going to click on the vertical and there we go. And we're going to make it a mount. Type in a mount. And does it look that direction? There we go. So we got one done. Boom. That's good. One amount done. Fantastic. Then the second one, the second one, we want it to be a coin. We've got an image called four coin. It must be in the second column stacked and scaled in units of a hundred thousand. So every hundred thousand must be a coin. So I'm going to click on the blockies. They all the little bars. You see their bubbles around all of them. Now, if I change it now, it's going to change all of them. But I'm going to click on this one again. Do you see the little bubbles are just around this one? So now I can right click and format this particular data point. So I'm going to format that data point. So we get a little box that appears over here. So let's look at the options. First of all, I want to fill it. I want to fill this data point. I want to fill it with a picture. So I'm going to click on picture and I don't want that picture. I'm going to go and find my own particular picture. So I'm going to go insert one and we're going to get one from the file. Okay, I've gone to that folder. There is the coin I want. I want that coin, that fire brand coin. I'm going to click on it. I want to insert it and see what happens. So there's our coin. Okay, it doesn't look like we want. So let's look at these options over here. Let's go down. So we want to stack it. But we don't just want to stack it. We want to stack it with a scale. I think there's stack with a scale. Stack with scale. And we can specify the units. And we want it to be every 100,000 units. If we do that and press enter. There we go. And so there we go. Oh, there we go. That looks like a stack. So we went to the full options picture and then we specify the details over there so that's that one i think done okay maybe yes we've done that now our horizontal axis labels must look like that and must be displayed as shown in the chart and major units every two days so so let's look at it okay at the moment they are not horizontal so i'm going to click on them and you'll see automatically as i'm at the chart axis options over here format these axes so i'm going to go here i don't worry about that i'm going to actually look at their size and properties and the text direction i'm going to specify that it goes there that way it sees that the direction this there we go so we got that correct so there we go that's correct and now we want the data type must major units of every two days did they they said major units of two days so the major units we're going to say hey we want it to be every two days please now if i do that ah i took those ones away because it's every second day that they are mentioning so there we go okay i think that's done and close that that looks pretty good did we do everything i think we're done that's the question done well done great 12s don't forget about our channel for computer theory. That's Mr. Long Computer Terms at tinyurl.com slash Mr. Long Computer Terms. And remember, we're also on TikTok at Mr. Long Education. So follow us there. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.